In this video, we deal with one more example of the method of partial fractions, combining the different just we've dealt with so far, including a repeated quadratic factor. So here's the example I want to work on here. Integral of 25 over x times x over plus 2x plus 5, all squared, dx. So what should our partial fraction decomposition look like for this fraction? So we have the fraction over here. We know one term for sure is an a over x. But then how do we deal with that repeated quadratic factor? We want to combine our two ideas from our other videos about quadratic factors and about repeated factors. The repeated factor one basically said, whenever I had something that was repeated, I need to add up one term for each power up to how many I have with the same numerator on it. So what you want here is a bx plus c over x squared plus 2x plus 5, and then a dx plus e over x squared plus 2x plus 5, all squared. That's our setup here for this decomposition. This is going to be a long problem. It's going to be a lot of parts in it, but you'll see how they all sort of come together at the end to give us the answer. So let's, let's again do our value substitution approach where I'm going to clear denominators and see what I get. And that gives me the following. 25 should be a times x squared plus 2x plus 5 squared plus bx plus c times x times x squared plus 2x plus 5 plus dx squared plus ex. Now for a first value, the obvious choice needs to be to plug in zero. If I plug in zero, all the x's go away and I'm left with just a, so let's plug in zero. I get a 25 over here. This becomes an a times a 25 plus zero plus zero. This tells me that a is one. Wonderful, there's a first start. But from here on out, there really aren't any good numbers to plug in. At least there aren't any numbers that make terms go away. So let's start by plugging in small numbers, because small numbers are usually better than big ones. Let's try plugging in 1 and minus 1 and see what happens. So let's plug in 1 first. If x equals 1, I get a 25 on the left. It's always going to be 25 on the left. I get a, which is 1, times 1 plus 2 plus 5 is 8 squared is a 64, plus b plus c times 1 times 8 plus d plus e. If I plug in minus 1, 25 again equals, this time I get a 1 for a times 1 minus 2 plus 5, so 4 squared is 16, plus negative b plus c times minus 1 times 4, plus d minus e. I'm not seeing anything too great here for being easy. Let's plug in some more small numbers and see what we get. Let's plug in minus 2 as an initial, another value. So I plug in minus 2. I still get a 25 over here. Minus 2 gives me a 4. Minus 4 plus 5 is a 25 again over here. That's nice. Plus a minus 2b plus c times a minus 2 times a 5. Plus 4d minus 2e. Let's plug in minus 3 and see what happens. So as of now, my thought process here is I'm plugging in numbers that are more negative so they get rid of that plus 5 and seeing if that helps my case at all. So I'm going to plug in minus 3 and see what happens. If I plug in minus 3, I get 25 equals, if I do minus 3, that's 9 minus 6 plus 5 is 8, so a 64 here, plus minus 3b plus c times a minus 3 times an 8 again, plus 9d minus 3e. So let's collect all of our equations here to get. This is, this is where these problems get hard, is because I'm going to have to solve this system for these four variables. They don't have nice numbers to plug in, but seeing one of these worked out should help you be able to process these problems in the future. So let's move all of our numbers over to the left side and rewrite our equations and see what we get. So the first thing I'm going to see here I'm going to do is I'm going to divide the third equation everything by 2 and the fourth equation everything by 3 because they're all divisible by those numbers. So this will become 10, 5, 2 and 1, and 1, 3, 8, 24, and 13. And now I can eliminate e using the third equation because it has a 1e in it, and I can add that to all my other equations in the appropriate ways to get rid of e. So if I add the first equation to the third equation, that'll give me a plus e and a minus e. So I'm adding them together to give me a minus 39 equals 8 b plus 3c plus 3d. If I 
do the second equation minus the third equation. That'll get rid of the e as well. 9 equals negative 6b plus c minus d. And then do 4 minus 3. Negative 13 equals 14b minus 3c plus d. I'm going to now divide the first equation by 3. Negative 13 equals 6b plus c plus d. And now I see that I have a minus 6b minus d and a 6b plus d. So if I add those two equations together, I will get that minus 4 equals 2c, which tells me c equals minus 2. Good. There's my first term that I actually have out of the uh, system here. Now if I add 2 and 3 together, these two together here, minus 4 equals 8b minus 2c. I already know c is minus 2, so this becomes a plus 4, becomes a minus 8 on the other side. That tells me that b equals minus 1. And now we just work back up to get all of our coefficients. Since b is minus 1 and c is minus 2, and I have this equation here, I then know that minus 13 equals 6b, 6b plus c plus d. That's a minus 6, that's a minus 8, add that over, so d must be negative 5. And we have to get e, but we can go back to our original equations to get e. So we had earlier 9 equals 4b minus 4c plus d minus e. So then e is 4b minus 4c plus d minus 9. 4b is minus 4. Negative 4c is a plus 8. d is a minus 5 and a minus 9. That's a minus 10. Now, what does this tell us? This tells us we then have our partial fraction decomposition as the following. Like that. A lot of work to get there, but we finally got there. Now it turns out we want to manipulate this a little bit more before we actually go to integrate things. And that's because our integrals are going to be a little bit strange for this setup. So the point is, if I want to get my log term like I get pretty much every time, I want u to be x squared plus 2x plus 5 here. But that means my du should be 2x plus 2 dx or 2x plus 1 dx. So the point is, my numerators here, whenever I'm doing that, have to have an x plus 1 in them, not just an x. It was just an x last time because I just had x squared plus 9 in the denominator. This is more complicated. I need x plus 1s instead of just x's. So the way I want to rewrite this is the following. 1 over x plus a negative x plus 1 over x squared plus 2x plus 5. That's x minus 1. I'm missing a minus 1 still plus a negative 5x plus 1. That gives me a minus 5, so minus 5 over x squared plus 2x plus 5 squared. Now when I split this up, I'll be able to actually integrate things when I try to solve this out. Let's now work towards the integral here. And we'll write out each term here separately that we're going to integrate later. So 1 over x, minus an x plus 1 over x squared plus 2x plus 5, minus a 1 over x squared plus 2x plus 5, minus 5 times x plus 1 over x squared plus 2x plus 5 all squared, and then minus 5 times 1 over x squared plus 2x plus 5 squared dx. So there's our setup. Now let's start integrating things. The first term is easy. Integral of 1 over x dx is just log of x plus c. Great. The next easy term is the negative integral of x plus 1 over x squared plus 2x plus 5 dx. Since we set up the x plus 1 before, I can now set u to be x squared plus 2x plus 5. du is 2x plus 2 dx. This then becomes a minus 1 half integral of 1 over u du. So I get 1 half the negative sign log of x squared plus 2x plus 5 plus c. The fourth term I have before is also fairly easy. Negative 5 integral of x plus 1 over x squared plus 2x plus 5 squared. 
again to set up the x plus 1, I can make the same u substitution as before. And then I'm going to get out of this negative 5 halves integral of 1 over u squared du, which integrates to negative 1 u to the minus 1, 5 halves 1 over x squared plus 2x plus 5 plus c. Now the last two terms are the tricky ones, and they involve integrals of the form x squared plus 2x plus 5 or 1 over x squared plus 2x plus 5 squared. And you might recognize these from previous sections. These ones we need to do trig sub and complete the square to make this work. So x squared plus 2x plus 5, I can write as x plus 1 squared plus 4 for both of these. And what sub am I going to want to use? Well, I'm going to want to use x plus 1 is 2 tangent theta. Because if I do that, I will then get a tangent, 4 tangent squared plus 4, which becomes a 4 secant squared, and then I can work things out from there. So let's do that. We had a negative integral of 1 over x squared plus 2x plus 5 dx, which we know is negative integral of 1 over x plus 1 squared plus 4 dx. Let's make that substitution. So dx is 2 secant squared theta, d theta. I then get a negative integral of 2 secant squared theta, d theta, divided by a 4 secant squared theta. And I get that when I do my substitution because I will end up with 4 tangent squared theta plus 4. That's 4 secant squared theta. The secant squareds cancel. I'm off with just a 1 half d theta. So my integral then becomes a negative 1 half theta plus c, and theta is then inverse tan of x plus 1 over 2. So this becomes negative 1 half inverse tan of x plus 1 over 2 plus c. There's that one. Then we have to do our last step in the process, which was the negative 5 integral of 1 over x squared plus 2x plus 5 squared to which we're going to apply the exact same trick, which will give us a negative 5 integral of 2 secant squared theta d theta on top, and the bottom we'll see a 4 tangent squared theta plus 4 squared. So the bottom's going to become a 4 secant squared theta inside, so it's going to be a 16 secant to the 4th theta once I take the square. 2 secant squared theta over... 16 secant to the fourth theta, d theta. When I simplify this out, I get a 1 eighth, so I get a negative 5 eighths out front and a cosine squared inside. With that, we can integrate. We replace this by negative 5 eighths integral of 1 half plus cosine of 2 theta over 2 inside, and then we can integrate like normal. Negative 5 over 8 times a 1 half theta plus a sine of 2 theta over 4 plus c. Theta we know is the inverse tangent term from before. I'll have to expand out that sine of 2 theta to figure out what it is. Negative 5 over 16 inverse tangent of x plus 1 over 2 minus 5 over 16 sine theta cosine theta plus c. To get that we need our triangle again. Since our trig sub was tangent is x plus 1 over 2, we want x plus 1 over 2 like this. This is then x squared plus 2x plus 5, like it should be. And so then I get for this term a negative 5 over 16 inverse tangent of x plus 1 over 2 minus a 5 over 16 times 2x plus 1 over x squared plus 2x plus 5 plus c. And now that's all five terms. Now I can write them all out to get the answer of this function. So the function we had before at the beginning and if I write out all those terms in order, this is what I get. And then I could, if I wanted, recombine these terms a little bit to make it a little bit nicer and get the following. And I get that for my antiderivative. So yes, that problem is long and terribly complicated, has a lot of moving parts to it, but you should see that the ideas of it is all the same once you get things going. Once you write out the partial fraction decomposition, you have to solve for the coefficients, which is really hard in this case because you have a repeated irreducible quadratic factor with no nice values to plug into it. And then you just work it out from there. You work out the ones that are logs, the ones that are inverse trigs, and the ones that are just normal powers. You can do all of that each in its own little bit, and then recombine them to get the end for your answer. 
So all these methods by partial fractions integrals follow the same process. Find the decomposition, find the coefficients, then integrate each term to give you your answer for these integrals of rational functions that we could not do before we talked about the method of partial fractions.